In the harsh era of the Wild West, few characters capture the imagination as vividly as Doc Holliday. Known for his deadly shooting skills and mysterious personality, Holiday is a far cry from the romanticized outlaws of popular lore. Beneath the lore, there are some truly horrifying facts about the man dubbed the Deadly Doctor of the Wild West. Dive into the dark side of Doc Holiday as we uncover untold stories that reveal a complex and haunting legacy. John Henry Holiday, better known as Doc Holiday, was a gambler, vagabond, gentleman, and skilled gunman. He befriended Wyatt Earp and was present in Tombstone, Arizona before the infamous O.K. Corral gunfight. Doc Holliday has faced countless encounters with death. He nearly lost his life a total of nine times. Five attempts were made to hang him, and he was shot six times. He famously killed more than a dozen men in various melees, but modern researchers have concluded that, contrary to popular legend, Holliday killed only six men. Holiday was born August 14, 1851, in Griffin, Georgia, to Henry Burroughs Holiday and Alice Jane Holiday. He is of English and Scottish descent. At age 20, Holiday earned a degree in dentistry from the Pennsylvania College of Dental Surgery. However, his life took a different turn when he was suddenly diagnosed with tuberculosis, the disease that claimed the lives of his mother and sister. In fact, Doc didn't go west because of his health, likely due to his impulsive nature, and quick trigger finger got him into trouble forcing him to leave his home in Georgia. It is interesting that Margaret Mitchell, the author of Gone with the Wind, is related to Doc Holliday. Notably, Doc Holliday died on November 8, 1887, while Margaret Mitchell was born exactly 13 years later on November 8, 1900. According to historical data, Doc had feelings for his cousin, Maddie Holliday, and although she ultimately chose to become a nun, she remained in regular correspondence with him throughout her life. During his eventful life, Doc shot many people, most in self-defense. His preferred tactic is to target his attacker's firing arm, effectively disarming them while inflicting agonizing yet non-lethal wounds. In the summer of 1876, Doc Holliday began a new chapter in his life by moving to Texas. It was here at Fort Griffin that he would meet Wyatt Earp and the notable character known as Big Nose Kate, whose real name was Mary Catherine Elder Haroni. At John Shancy's saloon, where Doc usually deals cards, he runs into Big Nose Kate. She possesses a strong character, unyielding determination and fearlessness, and although she sometimes works as a prostitute, she is an educated woman. She is the second woman with whom Holiday is known to be romantically involved. While traveling from Dodge City, Kansas, Wyatt Earp tracks down a train robber, Dave Rudabaugh. With the authority given to him as U.S. Deputy Marshal, Wyatt begins a 400-mile chase to catch the outlaw. Seeking information, Wyatt went to Shancy's, the famous local establishment where the owner, John Shancy, revealed that Rudabaugh had been there before but did not know his whereabouts. He directed Wyatt to Doc Holliday, who played cards with Rudabaugh. Wyatt approaches this encounter with skepticism, aware of Doc's aversion to lawmen. However, when he met Doc that evening at Shancy's, he was amazed at Holliday's willingness to talk. Doc shares his belief that Rudabaugh has likely returned to Kansas. Wyatt passes information on to Bat Masterson, sheriff in Dodge City, which played a pivotal role in Rudabaugh's subsequent arrest. As narrated by Glenn Boyer in I Married Wyatt Earp, an incident occurred in 1878 where Wyatt Earp kicked two cowboys, Toby Driscoll and Ed Morrison, out of Wichita. During that summer, when these two cowboys with the group of about 24 men arrived at Dodge, they launched a daring assault on the town while galloping down Front Street. They entered the Long Branch Saloon, vandalized the room, and harassed customers. In response to the uproar, Earp burst through the front door and before he could react, a large number of cowboys pointed guns at him. At the same time, however, Doc Holliday, playing cards at the back of the room, noticed the disturbance going on. 
He quickly drew his weapon and pointed a pistol to Morrison's head, forcing him and his accomplices to give up their weapons. Doc's decisive intervention rescued Earp from a critical situation. Curiously, there was no newspaper in Dodge City covering the incident at the time. Regardless of what really happened, Earp credited Holiday for saving his life that day, and the two men became friends. The 1993 film Tombstone played a major role in reviving Doc Holliday's image, largely due to Val Kilmer's portrayal of the iconic character. Kilmer's performance produced a number of memorable lines, some of which may even be historically accurate. In a scene where Holiday confronts villain Johnny Ringo, played by Michael Bain, he delivers the line, I'm your huckleberry. According to historian Gary L. Roberts, the phrase was actually popular at the time and meant, I'm the one you're looking for. In another pivotal moment at the end of the film, Holiday once again announces his presence with the same phrase. However, Roberts clarified that there is no historical evidence to support this particular scene. Interestingly, I'm Your Huckleberry is also the title of Val Kilmer's recent memoir. At the OK Corral, witnesses said that Frank McLaury gained a late advantage over Holiday in a 30-second gunfight. When McLaurie aimed his gun at Holiday, he was said to have declared, I got you now, you son of a bitch. In response, Holiday's historically accurate retort was, You're a daisy if you do. Basically, what it means is, Good for you if you do. In the end, the outcome was known to everyone. Holiday was unharmed, while McLaurie was shot dead. The gunfight at the OK Corral remains one of the most popular stories in the American West, leading to its depiction in many Western TV shows and movies. Holiday is often a prominent part of the story. He was portrayed by notable actors such as Kirk Douglas in Gunfight at the OK Corral, 1957, Stacy Keach in Doc, 1971, Val Kilmer in Tombstone, 1993, and Dennis Quaid in Wyatt Earp, 1994. Here are some lesser known facts about Doc Holliday. Although Doc died penniless at the age of 36 in Glenwood Springs, in his short life he owned a dental clinic, a saloon, and even a silver mine. One interesting aspect of Doc's life is that he was once roommates with Frederick Walter Pitkin, who later became governor of Colorado in 1879. When an extradition order was issued against Doc, he went to Arizona to face murder charges involving Frank Stilwell. However, Pitkin, citing a technical error in the paperwork, refused to grant the extradition request. Doc's journey from Leadville to Glenwood Springs via Independence Pass, a 24-hour carriage ride, was fraught with danger and suffering, especially for a frail man like him. When it comes to Glenwood Springs, Doc's purpose isn't just to soak in the hot springs. Instead, he searches for Indian medicine in the caves, hoping to cure his illness. As his life drew to a close, Doc sought the advice of Father Downey, a founding priest of St. Stephen, who is said to be a friend of the ailing man. It is believed that Doc turned to Father Downey, perhaps to seek forgiveness for his sins. Contrary to popular film roles, Doc Holliday did not kill Johnny Ringo, a member of the cowboy gang. In fact, it was his longtime mistress, Big Nose Kate, who briefly ran away with Ringo. When delving into the mysterious truths of the deadly doctor of the Wild West, we come to appreciate more the complexity and struggles of a man who has left an indelible mark on legendary Old West history.